My mom's birthday surprise. My name is Thomas, and I live with my mom, Rose, and my younger sister, Mary, at a place called Huawei Beach City. Our house is right by the ocean, with the sound of waves crashing against the shore all day and night. Mom has long, black, smooth, and shiny hair, which she always ties up in a neat ponytail while she's busy around the house. Today was a special day, Mom's birthday, and I wanted to surprise her. It all started that morning when I couldn't find my English book. I needed it for homework, but it had mysteriously disappeared. I rushed to the kitchen where Mom was, as always, multitasking. She was making pizza, one of my favorite dishes, and brewing a fresh pot of coffee. The smell of melting cheese and roasted coffee beans filled the house, making my stomach grumble. Mom, I called out, my voice filled with urgency. Where's my English book? I've looked everywhere. Mom, without even looking up from the dough she was kneading, responded calmly, Did you check your room, honey? I did. It's nowhere. Did you see it? I asked, a little louder this time, my frustration growing. Just then, Mary popped her head out from the living room, her arms full of colorful balloons. She was getting the house ready for mom's birthday party later that day. She had a mischievous smile on her face, the kind that always made me suspicious. She had been acting strange all morning, sneaking around the house, whispering with mom, and giggling. I didn't know what they were up to, but I didn't have time to figure it out. I needed my book. Mary, have you seen my book? I asked, my tone sharper than usual. Mary just giggled, her green eyes twinkling. Maybe the book grew legs and walked away? She teased, tying another balloon to the chair. Not funny, Mary, I groaned. She was always making jokes, and this time wasn't the best moment for her humor. Mom chuckled softly from the kitchen. Maybe it's a good time to take a break, Thomas. You've been working hard on that project all week. Come help us with the decorations instead. But I wasn't about to give up so easily. Something felt off. The book couldn't just disappear. I ran back upstairs, determined to search again. My room was a mess, books scattered on the floor, papers everywhere, but no sign of the English book. I checked under the bed, behind the curtains, inside my closet, even inside my shoes, still nothing. As I stood in the middle of the room, scratching my head, I heard a sudden knock at the door downstairs. It was a loud, urgent knock, the kind that sent a shiver down your spine. Who could it be? We weren't expecting anyone, and it wasn't like we lived in a busy neighborhood. Huawei Beach City was a quiet, peaceful place, especially around this time of year. Thomas, can you get the door? Mom called from the kitchen. Reluctantly, I headed downstairs, my mind still on the missing book. I opened the door, and there stood a man, a tall, broad-shouldered man with a stern expression. He was dressed in all black, his coat flapping in the wind. His face was hidden in the shadows, making him look mysterious and a bit intimidating. Are you Thomas? The man asked, his voice deep and commanding. I nodded, my heart pounding in my chest. Yes. Can I help you? The man handed me a small envelope without saying another word. His eyes seemed to study me for a moment, and then, without explanation, he turned and walked away, disappearing down the street as quickly as he had appeared. I stood there, frozen in place, staring at the envelope in my hand. What's that, Thomas? Mary asked, peeking over my shoulder. I don't know, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. 
The envelope was plain, with no address or markings, only my name written in bold letters on the front. I hesitated for a moment before tearing it open. Inside was a single piece of paper with a message that made my stomach drop. Find what's lost before it's too late. Time is running out. What does it mean? Mary asked, her voice a little shaky now. She wasn't giggling anymore. I, I don't know, I stammered, rereading the note. My mind was racing. Was this about my missing English book? And who was that man? Why did he seem so serious? I rushed back into the house, clutching the note, my thoughts swirling. Something strange was happening, something that felt bigger than just a lost book. Mom noticed the worried expression on my face and asked, Thomas, what's wrong? I handed her the note, and her face changed from curiosity to concern. This, this doesn't make any sense, she muttered, reading the message aloud. Mary, too, stood beside us, her wide eyes fixed on the paper. Just then, the power flickered and the lights went out. The kitchen fell into darkness, and for a moment, none of us spoke. The only sound was the distant crash of waves outside and the faint whistling of the wind through the cracks in the windows. Mom, this is getting weird, I whispered. What's going on? Mom didn't answer immediately. She walked over to the window, peering outside. I don't know, Thomas, she finally said, her voice steady, though I could sense a trace of worry in her tone. Suddenly, there was another knock at the door, this time softer but still firm. My heart raced. Who could it be now? Thomas, stay here with Mary, Mom said her voice firm as she headed toward the door. Mary and I exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what to expect next. Mom slowly opened the door, and standing there was an elderly woman, her hair silver and her face lined with age. She wore a long coat that looked too heavy for the warm beach weather. In her hands was a small, leather-bound book. She smiled, but something about her smile seemed off. Rose, she said in a soft, raspy voice. It's been a long time. Mom gasped, stepping back slightly. Mrs. Harper, I haven't seen you in years. What are you doing here? The woman, Mrs. Harper, glanced around, then locked her eyes on me. I believe your son has something he's been looking for, she said holding up the book. My heart nearly stopped. Could it be my English book? I stepped forward, staring at the book in her hands. It looked exactly like mine. The same faded cover, the same slight tear on the corner. But how did she have it? What? How did you get that? I asked, my voice shaky. Mrs. Harper smiled again her eyes glinting in the dim light. Some things have a way of returning when the time is right, she said cryptically. But Thomas, you must understand, finding the book is only the beginning. I didn't understand. The beginning of what? And why did I feel like this was more than just a simple missing book? Mom stepped between us, her face pale. Mrs. Harper, why are you here? What do you want with Thomas? The old woman's smile faded slightly. Rose, you know why I'm here. It's time. Time for what? I asked, my nerves on edge. Mom turned to me, her expression serious. Thomas, there's something I haven't told you, something I should have told you a long time ago. My heart sank. What are you talking about, Mom? She took a deep breath, clearly struggling to find the right words. This isn't just any book. It's special, very special. And it's been in our family for generations. 
I thought I'd hidden it away so it would never be found, but she glanced at Mrs. Harper, who was watching her with a knowing look. It seems I was wrong. I looked from mom to Mrs. Harper, my confusion growing by the second. But it's just my English book. I've used it for school all year. Mrs. Harper chuckled softly. Oh, Thomas, it may look like an ordinary English book, but it holds much more than just words. I was about to ask what she meant when suddenly the lights flickered back on, filling the room with a harsh white glow. For a moment, everything felt normal again, but deep down, I knew things were far from normal. Mary, who had been standing quietly this whole time, finally spoke up. Mom, what's going on? Is this some kind of joke? Mom shook her head. No, sweetheart, this is no joke. This book, it holds secrets, secrets that have been passed down through our family for years. And now it seems those secrets are about to be revealed. I felt a cold chill run down my spine. Secrets, family secrets, what could possibly be hidden in my English book? Before I could ask any more questions, Mrs. Harper stepped forward, handing the book to me. It's yours now, Thomas, but be careful. Once you open it, there's no turning back. I hesitated, staring at the book in my hands. It felt heavier than it should have, as if it was burdened with something unseen. My fingers trembled as I slowly opened the cover, revealing the familiar pages of my English lessons. But then, as I flipped through the pages, something strange happened. The text began to shift and change, the letters rearranging themselves into unfamiliar patterns. My breath caught in my throat. What? What's happening? I whispered. Mom and Mrs. Harper exchanged a knowing glance, and Mrs. Harper nodded. It's beginning. The words on the page started to glow faintly, and suddenly there it was, an image hidden between the lines of text. It was a map, a map of our house. What is this? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Mom looked at me with a mixture of fear and determination. Thomas, this is what I was afraid of. The book isn't just for learning English. It's a key, a key to something hidden deep within our home. A key, Mary said, her voice trembling. But why? Why is there a map of our house? Before mom could answer, Mrs. Harper spoke again, her voice low and serious. Your family has been guarding a secret for generations, Rose, and now it's time for Thomas to know the truth. The truth about what? I demanded, my patience wearing thin. Why is this happening? What's hidden in our house? Mrs. Harper smiled again, that eerie smile that sent a shiver down my spine. Something very valuable, Thomas, something that people would do anything to find. My heart raced. What is it? What's hidden here? Mom stepped forward, placing a hand on my shoulder. I don't know exactly, but I do know that it's dangerous. That's why I've kept it hidden all these years. Dangerous? This was all too much. One minute I was looking for my English book, and the next I was being told that our house held some kind of dangerous secret. None of this made any sense. I don't want any part of this, I said, backing away. I just want things to go back to normal. But as I turned to leave, Mrs. Harper's voice stopped me in my tracks. You can't run from this, Thomas. The moment you open that book, you set everything in motion. There's no turning back now. I froze, my mind racing. I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to close the book, forget everything, and pretend none of this was happening. But another part of me, the part that had always been curious, always eager for an adventure, wanted to see this through. Mary, 
who had been unusually quiet, stepped forward, her eyes wide with excitement. Thomas, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe we're meant to find whatever's hidden here. I shook my head. I don't know, Mary. This all feels wrong. But before I could say anything else, there was a loud crash from upstairs. The sound echoed through the house, making us all jump. What was that? Mom gasped. Mrs. Harper didn't seem surprised. It's starting, she said calmly. The house is waking up. Waking up? What did that even mean? Without thinking, I grabbed the book tightly in my hands and ran toward the stairs. Mom and Mary followed closely behind, and Mrs. Harper trailed after us, her footsteps slow and deliberate. As we reached the top of the stairs, I saw something that made my heart stop. One of the walls in the hallway had shifted, revealing a hidden door, one I had never seen before. That door, I whispered. It's never been there before. Mom looked at the door with a mixture of fear and awe. It's been there all along, she said softly. We just couldn't see it. I stepped forward, my hand trembling as I reached for the door handle. There was no turning back now. I hesitated for a second, the door handle cool against my palm. My heart raced, and I could hear my breath coming in quick, shallow bursts. What was behind this door? What could be so secret, so hidden, that even we, who had lived in this house for years, had never known about it? Mom's voice, soft yet firm, cut through my thoughts. Thomas, you don't have to do this. But I knew I did. Something inside me, maybe it was curiosity, maybe it was the need for answers, pushed me forward. With a deep breath, I turned the handle and slowly opened the door. The hinges creaked, revealing a narrow staircase leading down into darkness. A cold draft hit my face, sending a shiver down my spine. The air smelled musty, like old wood and something forgotten. Are we really going down there? Mary asked, clutching a balloon in one hand, still trying to hold on to some semblance of normalcy. I nodded. We have to. Mrs. Harper, standing in the shadows, smiled softly. This is what you were meant to find, Thomas. This is why the book came to you. My mind raced with a thousand questions, but there wasn't time for answers. I needed to know what was down there. Without another word, I took the first step, my hand gripping the old wooden railing for support. The stairs groaned under my weight, but they held firm as I descended into the unknown. Mom followed close behind, her face pale but determined. Mary, though hesitant, came next, her balloon bobbing behind her as if it were floating down into the darkness with us. And last was Mrs. Harper, her old weathered hands gripping the book that had started all of this. The further we descended, the colder it got. The dim light from the hallway above faded until we were surrounded by thick shadows. I could barely make out the steps in front of me, each one creaking and groaning as if they hadn't been walked on in years. Finally, we reached the bottom. There, in the dim light, I could see a small, dusty room. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before. Old wooden shelves lined the walls, filled with strange objects. Some looked like ancient artifacts, others were jars filled with mysterious liquids. But what caught my attention most was an old weathered chest in the center of the room. It was large, covered in dust, and looked as though it hadn't been touched in centuries. What is this place? Mary whispered, her voice trembling. I, I don't know, I replied, stepping closer to the chest. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat loud in the silence of the room. Mom stared at the chest, her eyes wide with recognition. This, 
This was my mother's, she whispered, almost in disbelief. I thought it was lost. I never thought I'd see it again. Mrs. Harper smiled knowingly. It was never lost, Rose. It was always here, waiting. Waiting for what? Without thinking, I knelt down in front of the chest, my hands trembling as I reached for the latch. It was cold to the touch, and for a moment, I hesitated. But something inside me told me I had to do this. I had to open it. As the latch clicked open, the chest creaked, its lid slowly rising on its own. A cold gust of air escaped from within, swirling around us like a gentle breeze. Inside, there was only one thing, a small leather-bound notebook, similar in size to the one I had upstairs. What is that? Mary asked, her voice barely a whisper. I picked up the notebook, my fingers brushing against the worn leather cover. It felt heavy, though it was small. The pages were old and yellowed, but the writing inside was still clear. It wasn't in English, though. It was in a language I didn't recognize. This, this belonged to your grandmother, Mom said softly, tears forming in her eyes. She told me stories about it, but I never believed her. She said it was a journal, a journal of secrets passed down through our family for generations. But why is it hidden down here? I asked, my voice trembling. What does it mean? Mrs. Harper, who had been watching us silently, stepped forward. It means, Thomas, that your family has been protecting something far greater than you realize. This journal contains knowledge, knowledge that many would seek to misuse. Misuse? I echoed, not understanding. Mrs. Harper nodded, her face serious. There are those who would do anything to get their hands on what this journal holds, your grandmother knew that. That's why she hid it here and why it has remained hidden until now. I looked down at the journal in my hands, my mind racing. What could be so important that it needed to be hidden away for generations? And why had it come to me? What do we do now? Mary asked, breaking the silence. Mrs. Harper smiled, but there was something sad in her eyes. Now, you must decide what to do with the knowledge inside. But be warned, once you read it, there is no going back. The secrets of your family will be revealed, and with them, great responsibility. I stared at the journal, my hands trembling. Part of me wanted to open it, to read the secrets that had been hidden for so long. But another part of me was afraid, afraid of what I might find and what it might mean for me and my family. Mom placed a hand on my shoulder. Thomas, whatever you decide, we'll face it together. But know this, whatever's in that journal, it's part of who you are. I took a deep breath, my heart racing. Slowly, I opened the journal, my eyes scanning the pages. At first, the words were strange, foreign, but then, as I focused, they began to make sense. They told a story, a story of my ancestors, of the secrets they had guarded, and of the great power that had been passed down through our family. As I read, I realized something. This wasn't just about me. This was about all of us, Mom, Mary, and even Mrs. Harper. We were all connected by this journal, by the secrets it held. But there was one more twist, one more secret I hadn't expected. At the very end of the journal, in a section written in my grandmother's hand, there was a message, a message for me. Thomas, it read, if you are reading this, it means the time has come. The secrets of our family are now yours to protect. But know this, you are not alone. Look to those you trust, and together, you will face what comes next. I looked up from the journal, my heart pounding. What comes next? I asked aloud, 
Mrs. Harper smiled, her eyes twinkling. That, my dear Thomas, is for you to discover. As I stood there, surrounded by the secrets of my family, I realized something important. This wasn't just about a missing English book or a hidden journal. This was about family, about the bonds that connected us and the strength we found in each other. No matter what happened next, I knew we would face it together. And that, I realized, was the greatest secret of all, the end.